Uh, we'll definitely have to wait. But okay, so guys, grab your notebooks or grab your notepads and stuff like that. We're entering the smith. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start off with the easy stuff. I'm gonna go with the two-handed mace and the two-handed axe. So the best head for the two-handed mace is the heavy horseman, heavy horseman's mace head, and for the grip would be the hardened oaken two-handed axe handle. It's D tier five. That's the dream right there. And then no pommel, no pommel whatsoever. With these two ingredients, you decide, you have to literally create the weapon and decide on the size and shape. I am going to be honest, I should recommend extra speed. Extra speed, so practically bring this down a notch. Because you're going to be needing a little bit of handling with this thing, because it's uh, a bit unwieldy. A bit unwieldy, but it is going to do the deeps. Hmm... Maybe even a max, sure. Practically you have to decide, but these are the ones. So the Heavy Horseman's Mace Head, and then the Hardened Oaken Two-Handed Axe Handle. Okay, now, next one would be the Two-Handed Axe. Now, a lot of people think it's the Heavy Bardiche Head, but it's actually the Large Northern Broadhead with Decorated Neck, the best one. Why? It because It's because it has the best swing damage factor scaling. It has 3.7 over the 3.6 of the Heavy Bardiche. Then, in terms of the handle, you go with the Hardened Oaken Two-Handed Axe Handle. Simply because it has the better length, 157.6. But, well, I guess they're interchangeable, but I'd rather have the Hardened Oaken Two-Handed Axe. For the pommel, no pommel. No pommel. Don't need it. Okay, again, you decide exactly length and uh, size. Go with what feels good. If you're on a horseback, probably you want length over everything else. If you're on foot, you might get away with uh, with a little bit of less length. This is maxing stats. This is maxed stats, not prices. Maxed stats. What was the weapon head? The head is the large northern broadhead with a decorated neck. Write that down, it's gonna be on the test. Large Northern Broadhead with a decorated neck. Out of the two tier fives, it's the it's not the heavy Bardiche head. Not the heavy Bardiche head. Even though I would agree it looks cooler, it's the large northern broadhead with decorated neck. And again, out of the two handles, it's the hardened oaken two-handed axe handle. The one without the swirly metals on it, even though I agree, the one with the swirly metals looks cooler. No pommel. Okay, next up. Let's go two-handed sword. So with the two-handed sword, the best sword blade, it's actually not a tier 5, it's a tier 4. It is the Long Fox Blade. Long Fox Blade has the best Swing damage scaling, 4.7. And it's even an excellent two-handed sword for companions because there's no thrusting damage. <sighs> Gamer dude Deadster, I'm giving the best stats for each type of weapon, dude. <sighs> yes, the polearm is the best because it has the best length and the best damage. I know that I am aware of that but this one's sexy some people want to use the two-handed sword okay so again long fox blade tier 4 it also does bonus damage against shields it breaks shields in two or three swings good for the guard I would actually recommend the etched highland guard because it gives hand armor plus five that's the only reason. And also, oh, Bronze Folks Guard. Interesting. 7.8.6. Hold that thought. Also go for the Pointed Crescent Guard. That could work as well. Okay, let me check which one gives the least amount of weight. 
Let's see. Because you want to be light-footed with this stuff. Especially if you're on foot. So it's definitely one of the tier 5s, but definitely needs to give you a hand armor plus 5. Then we go for a least amount of weight. 0, 30. Okay, that's not it. 0, 10. 0, 10. That's gonna be the pointed crescent guard. Okay, you go for the pointed crescent guard. Okay, now, uh, in terms of grip, in terms of the handle, it's a bit interesting because if you want to max out profit, you go with the highest tier handle. So if you want to max out profit, this is for profit, not for stats. If you want to go with profit, you just grab each item that has the highest tier and it has the most, and that uses the most amount of, um, and the highest quality of ingredients. But at the grip, instead of the highest amount of ingredients, you focus on a grip that can be used both as a one hand and as a two hander. So if we select it, we go down the line, we will eventually find this leather wrapped extra long hand, uh, two handed sword grip that can be used both as a one hander and as a two hander. That, for some odd reason, skyrockets the value of the sword. So for those of, for those out there who just want to make money, you go with the grip that gives you both of these stats. If not, if you just want to max out uh, damage, the tapered horn grip works excellently. That one's perfectly fine. That's actually the last one in the list, so it's easy to find. Okay, and then for pommel. I went with the with the uh, lightest one, which is the turquoise pommel. If I remember correctly. Oh no, I went the Fion pommel. I went the Fion pommel because that, for some odd reason, adds a stupid amount of damage. Okay, yes. So, long fox blade, pointed crescent guard, tapered horn grip, Fion's pommel. It does stupid amounts of. This is the best sword. This is the best two-handed sword of the game. Um, in terms of size... Oh, the camera's blocking the stats? Do you, do you need to see the stats? Come on, man. You need to see the stats? What is this? Sure. But practically, when it comes to size and length and shit like that, you gotta trust me, bro. You just gotta trust me. Usually with the stats, I just go with max blade, low grip low size, max handle. But, there's also a little bit of a but. A little bit of a caveat. In the handles for the two-handed sword, in the tier two handles, there's the long hide grip that when I mouse over it, it shows me those stats. Plus swing damage, plus swing speed, plus thrust, plus thrust speed, plus handling. Now, I don't know... <laughs> <laughs> it is actually more powerful. Holy shit, it is actually more powerful. Oh yeah, well, forget about the tappered horn. Go for the long hide grip. Go for the long hide grip, brothers. It's a tier 2 handle, long hide grip, difficult 100. You should easily get it. That is the best grip in the game. I knew it. I fucking knew it. For stats-wise, at least. Oh yes, for stats, it's the, it's the goat. Yeah, it's a little bit of an odd recipe. So, a little bit of a recap. Long Fox Blade. Pointed Crescent Guard. Long Hide Grip Tier 2. And then Fianna Pommel Tier 5. It's a weird one. But it checks out. Yeah, and the sword will look weird as shit. Actually, I want I want to create the sword right now, so I'm gonna press Control C to copy to for the game to remember the uh, recipe. I'm gonna buy some uh, hard wood because I'm gonna be needing it. Okay, let's let's create it. Let's let's do it. Two-handed sword. It's a piece of shit. It's it, there's a possibility that it's gonna be a piece of shit. I I do not deny that. Uh, okay, so refine there, and then I need 
Let's see exactly what do I need for the 200 sword to make it happen. Okay, there, control V. I'll need five fine steel. So, Cetra. Fine steel. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Forge. Not you, me. Make sure that the stats are in the right place. Might be a bit on the slow side. If I bring this down. Oh, that's too that's too short. This doesn't really give me that much. It's 126. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's see what am I rocking real quick. The Boo Boo Maker 5 5000 Ti. With a length of 117. Okay. So with 117, can I get away with that? Let's see. That would be 130. 111, a bit too short for my taste. Oh yeah, I can get away with uh, bringing them to size. Okay, so, blade is the longest, everything else shortest. Let's see. Mm, sadly, the stats didn't really go in the right direction. Let's call it X1, practically experimental boo-boo maker. There's always a bigger finish. Okay, so the X1 Boo Boo Maker is a little bit higher on the weight. Remember, encumbrance actually slows you down. Uh, swing speed is lower. It does an extra 26 cutting damage. Jesus Christ. Hmm. I might like the Boo Boo Maker better for its swing speed. And yes, as you can see, uh, the experimental boo boo maker is only worth 16k, while the boo boo maker that I'm wielding that could be used both as a one handed and as a two handed is um, actually worth 38k. So that's literally just because of the hilt that I'm using. That's all. That's that's all there is to it, which is insane. Okay. So those are the materials. I do recommend that you keep on experimenting a little bit with the weight. And with the handle, but I'd say that these are the the goat, the glory. Might modify to get that swing speed a little bit higher on it, though. Again, you can modify the link, you can play around with that. Next! So the next that I found out for the best stats, because I have all of the shit unlocked, would be the polearm. Now, two-handed polearm for swinging, so practically the glaive... The best ones are the Long Glaive Head. I think that one has the best scaling, if I remember correctly. I'll do a quick check. Yeah, yeah, it's the Long Glaive Head. Although I love the look of the Sword Staff. Long Glaive Head. Now, for the um, Flag, let me just check which one has the greatest length. 2012. It was actually not a tier uh, 5. 30, 30.2. 55. Triple Gonfalon. It's insane. 61. Rectangular banner. Just insane amounts of... Uh... Are those from a mod? They add those in the game. These are in the game. Okay, so... Uh, no pommel. No pommel. I can tell you right off the bat, no pommel. But, there's a little bit of an intricacy to the pole arm, to the glaive. As in, the less reach you have, the more damage it will do. So be careful a little bit with adding length to it. I know it's weird. That's why, in terms of handle, the best handle is the Hardened Ashen Staff. The one with the shortest length will give you the most damage on swing. So swing damage is 175. If I select the others which have the higher length, damage goes down. Damage goes down significantly. So you have to grab the shortest staff and that's going to give you the length. That's going to give you the damage. Yeah, as you can see, 
The more I shorten it, the more damage will do. The more I add length, damage goes down. It's a good thing that I move my face from there now. Let's see if I remove the flag. Damage goes way up, way up. Damage goes way, way up. So if you want to max out damage, hmm? Shouldn't it be a two hand? Yeah, it's the two hand is selected. It can be used as a one hand with shield. It can be used as a couch lance too. As long as you're using uh, the right handles. So if you want to max out damage, just don't put any banner, don't put any pommel, just utilize the long glaive head and the hardened ashen staff. If you want to get that extra length, bleh. these weapons, even with max length on horseback, are one shot on almost anything from horseback swinging. That is correct, gamer dude, that's sir. That's why I recommend that you put the rectangular banner because, well, it's going to help you out. Although. The handling goes way down. The handling goes way, way down if you do that. I mean, I guess you could get away with just adding an Aura Flame. Yeah, just add the Aura Flame banner. A little bit of a mix in between. Handling comes up a little bit. Should be a little bit faster to swing. Uh, my companions actually have those types of weapons equipped. Well, some of them. There we go. Glaive Flag. Practically has that recipe. And it's currently sitting on 189 cutting damage with linked 200, and she's doing fine. They're satisfying to use? Yeah. They're as satisfying as throwing weapons. Then we got Peeny the Tennis over here. Kind of with the same idea. So those are the best. Practically, bottom line, bottom line for the two-handed polearm is... Um, Long glaive head, harden ashen staff, and then play around. Uh, no pommel, and then play around with a flag that you would like to attach. But it's optional. You can literally not put anything. But you know, in case you want to balance out the reach, if you want to go for the best, um, if you want to go for the best couched lance, it's the uh, thin fine hewing spear if I remember correctly, simply because it gives you the extra length. So Thin Fine Hewing Spear, best couchable lance. And then in terms of, uh, yeah, we can just go with the, with the, no, 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 Heart and Ashen Staff. So practically replace the Glaive Head with the Thin Fine Steel Hewing Spear and you got yourself the best lance. Um, I do have to mention that the Long Glaive Head can be utilized as a couchable lance. Found extra reach also limits things with a polearm hitting the ground and some swings. Yeah, hitting the ground and some swings, uh, decreasing your swing speed. It's not about the length, my boys. It's not. It's not all about the length. The rumor is true. You can actually perform wink, wink, nudge, nudge with less max length. Okay, for the rest of the stuff, I know for the javelins, which are for the best. So for the javelins, it's the uh, Thin Fine Steel Hewing Spearhead with Riveted Spear with um, the... Let me exactly sh check which one. Which one was the best? Ah, there we go. The Mahogany Javelin Shaft. No pommel. Doesn't do anything. So practically, it's all of the final options. So the last one, Thin Fine Steel... Last one, Riveted Spearhead Reinforced, and then the last one, Mahogany Javelin Shaft. It's easy to remember for this one because it's literally the last ones on the list, except no pommel because that doesn't add any stats in any way, shape, or form. All of them maxed. Size maxed because it does the most mi missile piercing damage. It's going to break shield. It's going to break anybody who gets hit with this thing. Glorious. And all of my characters have this shit. And they're ragdolling enemies across the map. Well, the, the ragdolls are going across the map. They can't hit across the map. Okay, uh, throwing axes, it's it's simple. It's uh, the throwing axe head, the second one in the list, so it's the first in the tier four, and then the last shaft. That does the most throwing damage. 
So if you want a good throwing axe head, it's this one. Size maxed out. It's not the last one, it's not the Francisca head. It's the throwing axe head. How can you tell? It has the best swing damage factor. Yeah. Anything else that I found? Uh, do I have... No, I don't have all of the mace parts. It's very difficult to unlock uh, parts for one-handed weapons because they don't give you a lot of experience when you create them. So that sucks. I don't know the best dagger. I don't know the best mace. Sorry. I don't know the best one-handed mace. Don't know the best one-handed axe. Don't know the best one-handed sword. And pike? Why would you use a pike when you can use a polearm? That's it. Throwing knives, don't know the best one, because I, again, haven't unlocked all of them. So that's all of the weapons that I know are the best. For value, if you want to build for uh, value, so just big piles of cash, the maxed out javelin is worth a lot of cash. It's around 17k a pop. Uh, and the two-handed sword, practically, you find the most expensive stuff. So let's check. Tamaskian steel. Any of the Tamaskian steel four blades. Plus the Cusp Southern Guard. Plus any of the tier five grips that can be utilized both as a one-hander and as a two-hander. So practically this one. And then get yourself... The pommel of the highest tier that utilizes the best quality ingredients or the most quality ingredients. And you're going to be getting a very, very expensive sword. That's it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Since you guys asked, I gave you the results of my research a little bit, uh... A little bit before reaching into a, uh... Guide. Into an, into an official guide. You know, a little bit of a sneak peek at the guide that I'm going to be making. No worries, guys. Hopefully you got the notes down. If you have any questions, now would be the time. Any question, there are no stupid questions. I might be giving stupid answers, so I can't guarantee that, though. Okay, so now, back to war. And a gulp of water. Uh, how did I get the recipe? Uh, the recipes, you simply get them by doing smithing orders. Smithing orders right here, just do all of them. Um, if you do javelin smithing orders, you will unlock javelin parts. If you do two-handed smithing or uh, two-handed mace smithing orders, you will get two-handed mace parts. Um, the two-handed uh, recipes will give you more experience than the one-handed recipes. And because the two-handed recipes give you more experience, it's a higher chance for them to unlock recipes, recipe parts. Uh, that's why I don't have all of the parts for throwing knives, don't have all of the parts for one-handed axes, and for the rest of the stuff that, I, that I've mentioned. Are the con guards still the top troop? Uh, the con guard, I think currently are losing to the Fionn champion. I think. They're still incredibly powerful. The Khan Gunner, the Khan Guard are still top tier. Also, keep an eye out for the Vlandian crossbowmen. If you have over 50 of them in your army, They'll uh, perform much better than any uh, normal variant archer group. Oh, hey, Ro Rothard, the Rethard. Let's take him out. Uh, Zeneva created an army. Good for you. We could have licked a few more wounds there, good sir, but sure. Zeneva's uh, gathering up an army near Aster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Practically, with crossbows, they reach a critical mass. Anything under 50, they're not going to outperform archers. Anything over 50, they will perform better. And I'm going to further delve into that uh, in the next playthrough when I'm going to be playing uh, with Vlandia. Did Ludana level up by chance? Oh, she leveled up a while ago, never mind. 
Disrupt line logs. Okay, courier ransom, sure. Caravan is moving on to Sibir. I'll lose that. I'll lose that quest. Even against mounted archers? And a target. I mean, I haven't really specifically utilized them against specific enemies. If you have an infantry in front of your crossbowmen, as you should, even against mounted archers. Oh no. How dare you attack me, Rothard? How dare you, good sir? Practically with infantry. So, the rule with infantry is if the enemy outnumbers your infantry, you put them in a square formation. It's the most powerful formation. What weapons do you recommend to start smithing with? Everything. Specifically the two-handed weapons. Okay, let's be honest. As I mentioned, the two-handed weapons provide you the most experience. Go with the two-handed weapons. For focus on them. But if you want in uh, recipes for everything, just do all of the all of the uh, smithing recipes or smithing orders. Also, a little bit of a caveat, I guess, a little bit of an exception to the rule. If you as a person want to play daggers you know you want to go for a dagger build i still haven't found out if it's viable or not it's going to be next playthrough if you want to have the best daggers in the game and you want to focus your character on daggers it's a no-brainer that you should be doing all of the dagger smithing recipes nah okay thank you is completely request the best way to get experience uh best way to get experience is uh completing quests requests yes Smelting is the second best. Free building is on last place. Apparently. Just because... It's not because of the amount of experience. It's because of the um, ingredients invested into the build. In the free build. It's just not as efficient. So. Completing smithing request first. Smelting second. Free build last. Okay, Cavs. Get yourself over there. Use the pet spam free build? No. Don't. Don't. Why you do this? Why are you making my heart go cry cry in the meow meow? You make my heart go cry cry in the meow meow man. That's not allowed. Okay. No worries, dude. No worries. We're all learning. We're all learning and I'm more than happy to share my research. Research. Experimentations stuff. Hell, my character was an experiment. I can wholeheartedly say that the endurance build for characters is the most broken thing ever. Look at my speed, boys. I still can't outrun a horse, though. I bet you that I still can't outrun a mauled mule. I, I saw at one point... Uh, I'm not exactly sure if the title was just clickbait, but there was a video on YouTube that said that athletics, you can outrun horses. It's not true. It's not true. I've experimented with that. Naked, maxed out athletics, I tried to outrun a companion who was on a mule. Could not outrun him. Although, I haven't really tested... So, I tested that out at 275 athletics or something like that. Haven't tested it out at 3.30, which I'm currently at, I think. Oh, they're not fucking moving. Okay. Warriors! We'll take the battle to them, then. Get moving, footmen! Forward! There. Bring in the calves to the side. And I'm gonna start firing away. Missed. Also, I do have to mention I am on max difficulty in case you haven't read the tag. Max difficulty, realistic settings, no uh, allied flag over my units, over my friendlies, because just trying to determine the enemy from the color of their equipment is so fucking cool. 
So that's currently what's going on. I'll show you guys the exact uh, build for my character if you guys want to see that as well. Uh, please raise your hands if you want to see my character build. And I will show it after the battle. If not, if you guys already know the build, then I'm not going to waste it. I'm not going to waste time. Ouch. Okay, we'll do. We'll check it out. We'll show it. I know I'm treating you guys like you're a class, but that's the most efficient way of doing things. That's just the most efficient. Seems some other formation broke and they're now charging. Hey, Zendar, as long as it works, man. But it's more like Rev Sensei rather than Senpai. Or as it should be. Just tune, tune in first time watching my stream? No worries, man. I don't know what's, what's with these guys. Ooh, boy. I'm just going to take out Rothard. Hopefully that's going to cause a charge. Hey, if I go down, it causes a charge. It should ch cause a charge for them as well. Ah, just going through the troops with just the damage of my horse. Gotta love it. But don't go into spears, you're gonna die. Ah, oh, fiddle faddle. There. Ah, they have too many crossbowmen. Uh, actually, horse archers charge. Let's see what I can do. I can miss, that's for sure. Get a charge in there. Okay, they're not aiming for me, which is great. Cut them down. Nope, can't cut them down. They're too fast. Hey, Barisha leveled up, which is great. Fuck, I'm down. Oh, that's fine. They can just charge in now. I'm not exactly even sure if I should if if I should say that this this character build is um, a max difficulty recommended build, but it's. No, 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 it's definitely a max difficulty recommended build, but you can use this build in any in on any difficulty whatsoever. But it's definitely definitely feels like it's meant to be for max difficulty just because of the the stupid tankiness that you get. Hey, Cetra leveled up. Nice. Two people leveled up in this fight. Love it. Okay, oh you're a prisoner, yeah. Oh uh, mm, no. Yep. No. Yep. Yep. Okay, so yeah, caravan is moving. I know I'll lose that quest. What you gonna do? My boy. So my boy has... Oh, I should move my face now, huh? I should move my face to the other side because I'm covering stats now. Can't win them all, man. The stamina build is not recommended uh, on having your own kingdom, though. Why, Zendar? Because you're still a master fighter. So, um, the idea behind this build is I have 10 endurance, max focus into both writing and athletics, and into smithing, for obvious reasons, for best money-making way and best weapons. I also have 10 into social, because... And maxed out leadership and charm because, you know, if you want to create your own kingdom, if you want to create your own uh, faction. The first thing that you do is when you create your character, you always select the options that give you either endurance or they give you focus points towards the weapon of your choice. So in my case, it was 
two-handed, bow, riding or athletics, smithing, and endurance. That's my focus from level one, because at level one, you have to survive. That's your objective, that's your mission, to survive and get good. Once you have Endurance 8, Endurance 8, you do not put any extra attributes points in Endurance because there's a perk in Athletics called Healthy Citizen that gives you an extra Endurance attribute point and a perk in Smithing who's giving you, Enduring Smith, who's giving you an extra Endurance attribute point. Don't put extra points into athletics because none of the attribute points go beyond 10. 10 is the max. Don't put 10 attribute points and then get those two. It's not gonna go up to 12. I tried. Afterwards, once you have eight endurance and you have focus points into uh, writing, athletic, smithing, and then the weapons of your choice, and when I say the weapons of your choice, is because this is a flexible build. If you want to go for one-handed, go for one-handed. If you want to go for crossbow, go for crossbow. It's your choice. Just decide on one melee and one ranged option. That's it. Go for both riding and for both athletics. Why do I recommend this? Because athletics gives you mighty blows which gives you a stupid amount of HP. Mighty Blows is currently giving me a whopping 80 extra HP, which brings my character to 190 HP because of other perks as well. And you also go max into riding because that's also increasing your uh, horse survivability by a stupid amount, and you're just a very flexible, powerful character on the battlefield. Uh, I can confirm that it's easier to control an army from horseback rather than if you're on foot as an infantryman. Of course, you can still, you can still experiment with that. You can still not put the five uh, focus points into writing and put them somewhere else if you so desire. But the simply the range at which you can perform in combat is just so much higher if you're going for writing. Plus, if you have another um skill at 330 that's also meaning that you're going to be getting some extra levels so that's why i also go with focus points into writing good after you have eight endurance points and you have focus points into your combat and into your uh, athletic smithing and writing you put points into social you need to become a better leader for your men scouting is covered by somebody else medicine is covered by somebody else Invest focus points and social points into charm leadership. Max them out. Go all the way up to ten social. There are no perks that give you extra attribute that they give you extra social. So you have to invest all of the attribute points in there. Now that I have this done, that I have these two covered, I also went with steward because. It's just extra experience for free, as long as you have a lot of soldiers, as long as you have a lot of food variety. Stewardship just increases like that. And it's my favorite to level up on companions as well, because it just gives you extra levels for free. Um, and hmm, do you have the perk extra companion? I'm not as sure which one I got. No, I went with extra, with extra uh, size limit. I went with, with extra party size limit, but yeah, the extra companion is pretty powerful as well. But eh, I just went with this one. Plus one clan party, that's also pretty cool. But to be honest, they're interchangeable. It, it all depends what you need in the late game. But yeah, uh, from here on out, since I still have 10 social, I'm going to be putting extra points to trade. And then at level 36, uh, with the extra attribute point, I'm probably going to be putting it in Vigor. Because that's going to allow me to bring that two-handed all the way up to 250 at least. Um, and yeah, Way of the Great Axe giving me more power, extra swing speed, hell yeah. Gotta love it. But yeah, I'm a powerful boy. I'm a powerful boy. And that's it. That's, that's all you need to go for. I might tap a little bit extra into medicine. I might not. It depends if I'm feeling cute or not. 
I'm, I'm definitely, for the next three levels, I'm definitely going to be filling up trade. Something because I have 10 social, which is which means that any trade that I do will simply give me stupid amounts of experience, and that's going to translate into extra levels. But yeah, those are, that's my recommended build. It is insane. Of course, this is a amalgamation of all of the tips that I've also received from viewers. Uh, Hello Music. Um, comes to mind in terms of tips for smithing, um, but all of you contributed and gave your advice and uh, thought me more. Also, I do have to mention the upper limit, the hard cap for any skill is 330 because it, it's maximum attribute of 10 plus 5 focus points. You can't go above 330, unless you have mods, or something like that. For example, with Roguery, I have not reached the hard cap. It's still yellow, it still has room to improve. Once it reaches red, that, that's when it will not go up any further. That's it. And that's all there is to it. In terms of equipment, I'm currently rocking two-handed sword, uh, bow, double quivers, with a royal destrier, because that's the horse with the most charge, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and I just, I'm just walking through enemy troops, and they die at my horse's feet. And the cataphract scale barding, which is a stupid, stupid, stupidly good um, piece of armor for the horse, 75 extra armor, which is just insane. This in combination with the HP and the charge is just super good. Tactus is also nice once you get it above 25 when you give your group uh, leadership by sergeants in battle. They form up and attack instead of blindly charging. Great. Sure. I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, which one? Tight formation? Sarge Havoc? Or is it loose formation? That should be tight formation, right? Well, whatever. 